By the time God of War 2 came out, the PS3 had already launched and people were hungry for a next-gen God of War game. It would take a few years to get one, in the meantime, there were a bunch of knockoffs and a God of War game for the PSP. Chains of Olympus was developed by Ready at Dawn and came out in 2008. It takes place a couple years before the events of the first game. In it, Kratos is firmly and confidently doing the bidding of the gods in hopes that they'll eventually take his nightmares away. With God of War 2 having already been released, this provides a pretty interesting view of Kratos as a character. I can go as far to say this is the most interesting he gets until the very end of God of War 3. The best way to describe this game is God of War, but smaller. There's an opening segment where Kratos fulfills a mission where he has to fight a reptilian sea monster, a run through a very famous Greek city, a large portion where you're going through a gauntlet of monsters and puzzles in a temple to find the temple's namesake, there's an extensive trek through the underworld, and it ends with a battle against a god. But the most interesting thing is Kratos' attitude. He's not filled with as much anger and angst in this journey and he's not as much of a dick. And his mission is far more righteous too. Helios, the god of the sun, has gone missing and Morpheus, the god of dreams, has infinite power without sunlight. So Kratos is tasked with finding Helios and returning him to the sky. And along that path he discovers exactly what he is. He's a monster. But he's more than a monster. He's a necessary evil. In the end, he has to sacrifice what little humanity he has left in order to save the world. He bets his interpretation of the god's promise over his one chance of happiness. And the dreadful irony is that it's all for nothing. As Atlas will tell Kratos years later, I would have destroyed Zeus if you had not put me here. Slave of the gods. The rest of the game is still very much God of War. Because of the limited hardware, they had to downscale everything and streamline the controls. This setup would be okay if the PSP wasn't such a clunky system to hold. I'm also not a fan of how dodging works in the PSP version. Thankfully, that particularly frustrating flaw isn't in the Origins Collection version of the game. The magic powers aren't all that different from the ones in the first game, the unlockable moves are the same as the second game, Helios' shield works the exact same way as the Golden Fleece, the only thing really new in the combat department is the Gauntlet of Zeus, which is really satisfying to use. And the game forces you to use it to unblock some areas and take down armored enemies, which makes it more useful and effective than any of the extra weapons in the previous games. The bosses are a lot of fun. The Basilisk is a lot like the Hydra, but it breathes fire and it's a bit more persistent throughout its section of the game. The Persian King is just a tough and strong human with some explosive attacks, but the way you kill him is fittingly brutal. Kairon is one of my favorite bosses in the entire series. He has a lot of moves that test your ability to dodge, block, counter, and use your magic and special abilities. On top of the fact, you can't beat him until you come back with the Gauntlet of Zeus, which adds a bit of an arc to his and Kratos' dynamic. And Persephone challenges you in very much the same way, forcing you to use all your tricks in order to beat her down. Again, they're not as bombastic as the bosses in the first game, but they serve their purpose quite well and are just really well designed from a gameplay standpoint. In the end, Chains of Olympus is exactly what it needed to be. It's a smaller and more intimate look at Kratos and this version of Greek mythology that helps the audience understand why God of War 2 happened and why God of War 3 should happen. I give it a 7 out of 10. Come back next time when I talk about the explosive finale of the God of War trilogy. I'm Mediocrity4, thanks for watching.